welcome brothers and sisters glad to have you on the broadcast tonight and special welcome to members of Pentecostal Cathedral and Pentecostal Sanctuary we will officially begin the broadcast in 10 minutes time 10 seconds sorry just to give a few seconds for everyone to get their gadgets tuned in and in place so the lord bless you let us pray brothers and sisters as we look to god and turn our minds over into his hands lord we thank you for this moment and this season i pray in the name of jesus that your divine presence may be with us we put our minds in your hands we need direction we need guidance we need you god to help us to navigate through these turbulent times vain is the help of man so father we stretch our hands to thee no other help we know if you should turn your face from us where else could we go so lord god as we come to you tonight to seek your face speak to our hearts direct our spirits that your people may align ourselves to your will in jesus name amen god bless you brothers and sisters thanks for tuning in and uh, tonight as we start this broadcast we are launching and starting a period of three days of fasting and prayer i will be speaking to this period how we need to position ourselves and how we will conduct these three days of fasting and prayer brothers and sisters we're about three weeks into the covid restrictions here in jamaica and uh, Jamaica thus far has been coping relatively well with the pandemic and as a result of the slow rate of transmission and the few deaths that we have experienced in Jamaica I believe that as a result of this low death rate in Jamaica and low transmission, the gravity of the moment has escaped many people. Well, brothers and sisters, make no mistake about it. We are at a seminal defining moment in history. And we, the church, cannot afford to miss what God has purposed for this moment. Brothers and sisters, we don't know how long these restrictions will last. We don't know how long it will be before the world return to its mad rush down the sinful road to destruction. And so we don't know how much longer we are going to have this privilege of time and space to give, to put our mind in the hand of God and to spend time to seek the Lord and to hear what God has for us. Humanity and in particular, we the church, 
We are now afforded time and space. As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, this time and space has been forced upon us. It has been forced upon us, allowing us an opportunity to reorder our priorities, to reset our spiritual instruments, and to seek God and realign ourselves with God's purpose and plan for these last days. Let us not, brothers and sisters, allow this window of opportunity to close without each one of us effecting some radical house cleaning and transformation to our lives. Let us not allow this window of opportunity to close before we connect with God and begin to tap into the unsearchable riches of Christ. Brothers and sisters, if we don't, if we don't use this opportunity, to tap into what God has been doing or what God wants to do in these last days, then we will be doomed. If we don't effect these changes that I believe God is calling us to church, we will be doomed to a life of chasing the world will be doomed to a life of mediocrity, spiritual apathy. We'll be doomed to a life of accepting a form of godliness and denying the power of God. If we allow this moment to pass without some spiritual radical transformation, we are going to be doomed to just accepting the life of going through the motion and pursuing an agenda that our boss and the world have set and ignoring what God's plan and purpose for us is. So, brothers and sisters, I want us to use this moment to develop and break into some spiritual habits that will follow us into the post-COVID era and uh, develop these habits so deeply that they will be part of the rest of our life. I want us to develop a scheduling and a pattern of prayer that we would become so accustomed to that we would not want to go back to a life of prayerlessness. We will develop a life of cherishing moments with our families that we will never want to go back to a life where we are just in a mad rush and can't sit down with our children and teach them the word of God can sit down and make the family the epicenter of our spiritual lives. And so, brothers and sisters, it is my hope that these three days of fasting will put us on a trajectory where we begin to develop spiritual habits. We begin to reconnect with God in a serious way. And we will come out of this period of COVID the better for it. And one of these devotional periods, brothers and sisters, I'm going to give you my perspective on what is happening in the world today. Because God has a purpose 
in all of what is happening, there is a reason for every season. And the church must connect with God's reason for this season. Many people are pursuing a path and a mindset with COVID that I believe is diametrically opposed to what God wants us as a church, how he wants us to be positioned at this time. And brothers and sisters, I will repeat because I feel it so pressing in my spirit. If we allow, if we the church allow this season to pass without connecting with God's purpose for this season, we will be doomed. Doomed to a powerless contemporary life kind of life that has overtaken us. We will be doomed to the spirit of apathy. Doomed to accepting and transacting a form of godliness. My apologies, brothers and sisters. My gadget phone was not off, and so a call just came. I trust you're back online. Just give me some indication if you're back online. God bless you. Amen. Just want to see if we are back online. It seems like we are live again. God bless you. Brothers and sisters, I want to impress on us. We cannot, as a church, if the world wants to do it, let them do it. But we, the church, cannot afford to come out of COVID the way we went into the COVID era. There will be political, economical, and structural changes after this COVID is true brothers and sisters the world will never be the same again never be the same again and so we have to position ourselves as the church for the post COVID era and find out Lord what would you have us to do so the structure of our fasting will be of such brethren. And I want you to listen to the structure and the scheduling of our fasting. Tomorrow, Thursday, and the fasting starts as of now. I'll tell you more about that. But tomorrow we will be focusing on our personal relationship with God. And building back an altar of prayer in our homes. I want everyone that will be participating in this period of fasting and prayer. I want you to choose somewhere in your home as your prior place. Could be your bathroom. Could be your bedroom. Could be your den. Could be your back porch. Choose somewhere, a closet. Find yourself a closet in your home and make that your prior place throughout this COVID period. There's something about having a place where you consistently pray at home. Because when you have such a place and you go there, your mind immediately shifts into prior mode. It is important you find yourself a prior place throughout this period of fasting and prayer. I will be giving you directions after these three days are over. So that's one thing I want you to do because I want you to begin to build back a personal altar of prayer. A personal space in your home where you and God can meet, 
where God can look forward to seeing you daily. So that's one of the things I want you to do. Tomorrow, we're going to focus on our personal relationship with God and building back an altar of prayer in our homes. We can't have carnal homes and have spiritual church. We can't have abusive homes and toxic homes and have a spiritual church. We can't dance the aisles, speak with the tongues of men and of angels at church and go home cursing and go home to a war zone. All we will be having, brothers and sisters, it's just an emotional ride in the sanctuary. The home has to be the epicenter of our spiritual life. That's why, brothers and sisters, during this COVID stay-home period, I want to encourage you parents, not just to teach your children mathematics, fathers, husbands, don't just teach your children mathematics and English. Begin to get them into a regime of family Bible study. Moses told Israel, teach them when they come in, when they sit at the table, when they're going out. Teach them, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Many parents are pulling out their ear and trying to cope with the school curriculum. But this is not normal time, brothers and sisters. When Nineveh heard about the judgment of God, the king of Nineveh closed down the school and he cut out the lessons and he says, everybody begin to pray. So I want you over the day tomorrow to be reflective on the broken down altars in our homes. Gather the family together and pray together. And I will be having three sessions of prayer, 10, 2, 10 o'clock in the morning, 2 p.m. and 9 o'clock in the night. And Sister Ellis will be joining me in some of these devotional sessions. I want you, brothers and sisters, for the day tomorrow, tomorrow day of fasting and prayer, choose you three sessions of prayer tomorrow outside of the three devotional hours that I will lead. Find you three sessions of prayer. Write down three things in your life that you would like to change. I want you before you go to your bed tonight to pray and reflect on three things in your life you'd like to change. Things that you have it within yourself that you and God can work on. Not on your wife, not on your husband, not on your children. But on me, what are three things in my life I would like to change? And I would like you to write them down. Write them down. I want you to also consider and write down three things that you believe God would have you to pursue in the post-COVID area. In other words, after all this is over and a vaccine has been found for COVID, after all this is over and the governments of the world has conquered COVID, what is the life I would want to go back to? What are the things I would like to pursue? Will my priorities remain the same or will my agenda change. 
will my perspective change or will we just pick up from where we left off? I want you to write three things. That you believe God would want you to pursue in the post-COVID era. Another thing I want you to do, brothers and sisters, choose two persons that you will be accountable to during and after the period of fasting and prayer. This could be a two prayer partners. Two persons who you will be accountable to. Where two or three are gathered together, touching anything concerning his name. He will be there to bless and do good. You're, you're going to be relating to these two persons. Let them know, these are the three things in my life I'd like to change. I want you to agree with me and pray with me. These are the three things I want to pursue after the COVID era. I want you to agree, pray with me. And, and, and you're going to develop an accountability with those two persons. When you're going through struggles, you can call up these persons and be transparent. Persons who you can trust and be transparent. In. When you fail, you can say, you know, I didn't do well today. Brothers and sisters, the abundant life, the unsearchable riches of God is there for us to explore. But as the people of God, we don't have the time. We are pursuing the dreams of the world and the agenda of our corporate entities. And what God has for us many times escapes us and it is within, within that paradigm of God's will and purpose that you will feel your greatest sense of joy and fulfillment from life so day one we will be pursuing and focusing on our personal relationship we can't come out as we go in. Day two, we will be focusing our, on our assembly. And I'm speaking specifically now to the members of Pentecostal Cathedral and Pentecostal Sanctuary. We're going to be focusing and praying on our, regarding on our assembly, its operation. The way we do things, our modus operandi. We can't go back. And we won't go back to where we were before COVID. Brothers and sisters, the time is short. The master is urgent. The fields are right ready for harvest. We, as the church, we have to begin to put our minds in the hands of God and allow God to direct us. I want us, brothers and sisters, to pray. Pray for the leaders of the assembly. And in particular, pray for pastor. Because he holds the helm of the sail. Pray that God will direct his mind, position his mind according to God's will. Let us, as we pray, put everything on the altar. There's no sacred cause. The only sacred landmarks are the apostolic doctrines of repentance, remission of sin, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptism in the name of Jesus, living a holy and a righteous life. Everything else is on the altar and is up for change. 
Amen. I didn't see nobody press any likes for that one. But brothers and sisters, this is a moment when changes is being forced upon us. And for those who resist change, we are going to be doomed with what we have. The spiritual little Jews that we feel when we come to church, we are going to be doomed to that. And we come to church and one person got the Holy Ghost and we say we had revival. We come to church and the praise and worship was, you know, heightened and we felt a euphoria and we danced and sing and went home and we say church was great. Can't go back to that, brothers and sisters. The time is too short. And so I want you to pray for the assembly. And pray. We have to restructure some of the things we have been doing. We have been doing them for 40 years. And the, the, the expiry date has passed. And we're still using the product. And it's not being effective, not creating an impact. But because this is all the product we have known, we stick with it and fail to open our minds that God could have given us another product. Brothers and sisters, this is a seminal moment in history. We can't miss it. If we miss it, we are doomed, brothers and sisters. So let's open our hearts, put everything on the altar, and put our minds in the hand of God and say, God, like rivers of water, turn my mind where you want it. So day two, be focusing on the assembly and its operation, its structure, its ministries. It's leadership. That's what we're going to be praying about. Now I will be speaking to you each day around these themes and topics. And on the final day, we'll be praying for our vision of revival and the saving of the souls of men. We will be focusing on the mission of the church. God's purpose in this hour. I will, be, I will be speaking to COVID-19. What I believe in my spirit, God is saying and doing in the earth today. I will be speaking about the reason for the seasons and explaining some things about God's purpose and the evil that is in the world today. So that's the structure of the three days of fasting. At the end of Saturday, I'll be speaking to the church to let you know where do we go from here, whether we continue, we prolong what we do, but just pray that God lead us. Now, brothers and sisters, each day I'll be giving you Assignment. Your assignment for tomorrow is to write down three things you want to change in your life and three things you believe God wants you to pursue after the COVID era. Find three sessions of prayer throughout the day. Amen. And people say, what am I going to pray about for three sessions? What do you talk about on the phone? For 10 sessions, I was just interrupted. It's the phone that was called that was coming in. Yes, we talked more than four hours of talk time on our phones each day. The same thing we talk to people about, we can talk to God about them. As a matter of fact, if we were talking to God about them, we would be better off. I tell people, I don't mind you chatting me with God. 
I don't mind you biting me with God. You want to talk about me? Talk about me with God. I don't mind it. And don't be surprised if I talk you with God and tell God how you stay and what you do. So, no, there's a whole lot to talk to God about, brothers and sisters. I'd like to close. But... For some people, some people will be doing the three days of fasting unbreakable. And so, and some people will be doing it just taking water. Others will be having one meal per day. One meal each day between the hours of 3 to 6 p.m. Amen. That's how we're going to be operating the, 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 the fast. So, we had our last meal this evening and the first day of fasting starts as of now. Your next meal for those who are doing the three days like Nineveh did will be Saturday evening. For those who are having one meal per day, you will be having that meal tomorrow evening at three, between the hours of three to six. And then you won't have another meal until Friday evening. There are some persons who may be unable because of health reasons to do the fast. Especially some of our more senior members. I'd encourage you if you can't do the fast, adjust your diet. Cut out the sugar for the three days. Eat fruits and vegetables. Amen. And the unsweetened juice. Like Daniel did. Amen. Cut out all the processed foods. And eat fruits and vegetables. Natural foods. Drink a lot of water. Amen. For the three days. And pray. 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 I'd like to leave a short word with you before I close. Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. I want to briefly talk about our frame of mind. Because as we go to pray and seek the Lord, it is important that we approach the throne of God with the correct frame of mind. Because transformation is only possible through the renewing of our minds. And the frame of mind with which we approach prayer will determine the outcome of prayer. Let me explain something to you. When an artist goes out into the open field to paint a landscape, there's a whole scenery before that artist. And to the Determine his composition, that is, to determine what he puts on the canvas, the content of the canvas. He sometimes uses a frame. Now, he'll use a viewfinder or a frame like this, and he will move that frame around. And looking through this frame, he will determine what's the best composition, what is the best vision, what's the best view, or which view provides him the best composition for his canvas. And looking through that frame, he will make a rough outline. See, the, when he looks through this frame, 
it narrows down what he sees. He's only going to be, a, be putting on the canvas what he sees in this frame. Anything outside of this frame will not be on the canvas. So, this frame is a guide. Now, when we talk about a frame of mind, it's speaking about the frame through which we view events. The frame through which we view circumstances. And that frame through which we view the world, view circumstances, that perspective determines to a large degree how we process our thoughts and the final outcome of our actions. One of the most challenging aspects of counseling is to be counseling a couple when both couples are looking through different frames. When both couples are looking through different frames, there can be no reconciliation. There can be no amicable position when both persons are looking through different frames because they are looking at the same landscape but the frame that they are looking in will only capture a part of that landscape. And the wife captures a part of that landscape through this frame. And the, 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 the husband is looking through another frame and seeing another part of the landscape. Uh, and, and, and so in this, if it, in this counseling process, I, I could just take my head out of my frame and begin to look through my wife's frame, we will begin to see the same things and then we can begin to agree on some common ground and use that as a basis of negotiation. So the frame you look through is important. Now as we go to pray, it is important, brothers and sisters, that we put aside our cultural frame. Put aside the frame of mind that we are accustomed to. And we begin to empty our minds so that God can fill it. God can fill it so that we begin to get the mind of Christ because sometimes we get a frame based on our culture and environment. Some of us preachers got a frame from our Bible school teachers, many of whom got their frame through some theology that has no biblical basis. If I was a preaching, I would ask you to touch a neighbor and tell them to change their frame. Because the frame we need to look to is the mind of Christ. So as we go to pray, brothers and sisters, let us not go praying, looking through our frame. But let us begin to move the frame and say, God, let my mind be in your hands. And let uh, this mind be in me, which also was in you, Christ Jesus. The word repentance means a change of mind. The recognition and acknowledgement of the present state of our mind should bring sorrow and grief 
enough for us to decide to change it. That's what repentance is. If you don't have a change of mind, you haven't repented. If you don't get a change of frame, you haven't repented. And brothers and sisters, church, there is need for repentance. We have not been doing well. We have been paying the bills, improving the infrastructure, but this is a seminal moment. God is saying, church, you have not been doing well. I'm knocking, open up and let me come in and speak with you. Can we empty our minds, change our frame and say, God, give me your mind. Give me a mind, Lord. I, I think I better end because there's so much things going through my spirit. But you see, some of us as Christians, we just want COVID to pass, to go back to living like the world. We can't wait for COVID to pass, to continue our journey along a path of worldliness and godlessness. But let's change our frame. Change our frame from fear to faith. Let's change our frame from carnality to spirituality. Let's change our frame, brothers and sisters, from triviality to essentiality. Let's change our frame from the flesh to the spirit. Let's change our frame from the earthly to the heavenly. Let develop a new mindset. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. Change our frame and be no more a friend of the world, but recognize that we are in the world, not to change the world, but to save men and women from out of the world. May we at this seminal moment not miss what God is trying to bring us to as humanity. And most of all, may we the church hear the knocking. May we the Leodosian church hear the knocking at the door and leave our agenda and leave our plans and our schedule and go open the door and let him in. I'd like to pray. I'd like to pray. I'd like to pray. I trust that you'll find a place of prayer, brothers and sisters. You'll hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in your spirit. Just throughout the day of prayer and fasting tomorrow, you will lock in with God in a secret place and say, speak to me, Lord. Speak to me. Can't go back. Won't go back. Won't go back, God, to the life I used to live where I had no time for you. Oh, Lord, I won't go back to chasing the wind. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I pray you bless your people right now. Let a spirit of grace and supplication come upon your children. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus that your divine spirit will speak your purpose into every heart. I pray especially for the members of Pentecostal Cathedral and Pentecostal Sanctuary. Oh God, let the vision God come alive in our spirit. Oh Jesus, let there be a shift in our frame.
so that we begin to look through your frame and understand your purpose. I commit them into your hands now, dear God. Lord God, for them to have a moment of spiritual feast that will transform their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining. Join me tomorrow morning at 10 for a devotional hour where we will contemplate some of the things that God has been placing in our spirits and share some words of prayer with you. God bless you. We pray one for the other and enjoy a day of fasting with God. God bless you.